YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm first gonna make sure that my mic is on because I just recorded a video recently where my mic wasn't on and we are good to go. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to make calorie counting easier. I often get sometimes get some pushback in terms of how to count calories and calorie counting takes a lot of time and calorie counting's this and hopefully this video is gonna make it easier for you to count your calories, see results, see progress, lose weight, gain weight, whatever your goal is, this video is gonna help, right? So we're gonna have an intro, seven main topics we're gonna to talk about, and then an outro. And both of those things are very important, so I put them in different colors, so you, it signifies importance. I think at least that's what different colors signifies to me, is it is important. So intro, very quickly, if you do not know how to count calories, head to this video right here and that is going to teach you exactly how to count calories. And I say this, and I really, really need you to understand this. Most people do not count calories correctly. So if you're somebody who thinks you know how to count calories, I would still go check out that video because that is going to be the most important part of this entire process because if you are not counting calories accurately, none of this is going to help or make sense. It probably will help, but it probably won't make sense. And so if you don't know how to count calories, please either watch that video beforehand or watch the video afterwards after we've gone over this stuff, all right? So number one, again, that's very, very, very important. Most people right now, vast majority of people I talk to are not counting calories correctly. So please make sure that you are counting calories correctly, okay? So that's the intro, just really quickly, just wanna make sure you know that. Now, number two, starting, I'm sorry, number one, number two, but number one, diving into the first seven things we have here, starting small. When it comes to how to make calorie counting easier, start small. So many people dive into it and they get super overwhelmed. They don't know how to start. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to weigh their food. They don't know how to track calories. Do I use an app? What do I do? Again, if you don't know how to track calories, head to that video and watch that video. But once you watch that video, once you know how to track calories, start small. What I do with my clients a lot of times is we just go from, let's say one week, all we're doing is tracking calories. That's it. We're not worrying about how many calories to hit. We're not worrying about how much protein to hit. We're not worrying about staying in a calorie range or carbs or fats. None of that. We're just focused on tracking calories, learning how to track calories, because tracking calories is a skill. So you have to make sure you understand how to actually track calories. So the first week, just track calories. Don't focus on, oh my God, I gotta hit this goal. It's gonna put more pressure on you. It's gonna put more stress on you. Don't worry about that. Just worry about tracking calories, number one. Let's say, that goes on for a week or two, which by the way, it very well might take you a week or two to actually learn how to track calories correctly. And that's okay, it's what it's supposed to happen. You're, you're learning a new skill. You don't learn how to ride a bicycle or drive a car in a day. You're not gonna learn how to do calorie counting in a day. So it's gonna take some, some time and some trial and error, and that's okay, man, but just know that up front. Let's say the second week you go to, okay, now I'm gonna continue tracking calories and I'm gonna to try to hit a calorie goal, whether that calorie goal, you know, and again, one little hack here, I didn't write it down, but one little hack here, we're making calorie counting easier. Let's say you do have a calorie goal, stop trying to hit one exact number. Give yourself a range. So let's say, for example, you are trying to eat 1,800 calories a day. Eat anywhere between 1,700 to 1,900 calories. Listen, if you eat 1,742 or 1,832, if you're in that 1700 to 1900 calorie range, you are two thumbs up, good to go for that day. And so that's a little side hack right there to make calorie counting easier. Give yourself a range of calories. Stop trying to hit exactly one, one number because that's probably what's freaking you out as well. Give yourself a range. And so now the second week of you counting calories, you're learning how to count calories still. Now you have a calorie range. Awesome you're working that stuff in, right? You're starting small, you're building up. Let's say week three or four, you're like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna keep counting calories, I'm gonna keep trying to hit my calorie goal, and I'm gonna work in a protein goal. So now you can work in a protein goal and say, hey, I'm gonna try to get X amount of grams of protein per day, which if you don't know how many grams of protein to eat per day, I've done a video on my YouTube channel about that as well, so check that out, why don't you? Um, and so you can add that in, and honestly, that's usually the extent of what I go with with my clients. We normally don't go into tracking carbs and fats. We just normally track our calories, track our protein, hit those two goals, hit those two things, and your two thumbs up, good to go. If you hit your calories, 
and you hit your protein, your carbs and fats can only be but so much because you're hitting your calorie goal and you're hitting your protein goal. So that's my two cents in terms of starting small, start by just learning how to track calories. Start by just you know learning how to input food in, into your whatever MyFitnessPal or whatever app you're using. Learn how to weigh your food in the food scale. Learn how to read serving sizes and labels and that kind of stuff. Then from there, just start with giving yourself a calorie goal and a calorie range goal. So not one number, just a, a range goal and then having a protein goal. And then from there, you know, after three or four weeks, you will start to become very efficient at counting calories. I just like spit everywhere because there's nobody in front of me. You'll become very efficient at counting calories and that can help you for all the rest of this stuff moving forward. Oftentimes I see people get very overwhelmed when they first start counting calories because they're trying to hit their macros and their carbs and their protein and the, hit this one number, make it easier yourself, right? So that is number one. Now going to number two, similar, eat similar foods. If you eat similar foods, you are going to make it that much easier for you to count calories. And remember the title of this video was how to make calorie counting easier, not sexier, not more fun or whatever the case may be. And actually it will be more fun because you're going to see more results and seeing more results is more fun, but it's how to make calorie counting easier. Eating similar foods every single day throughout the week, that is going to make your life easier. Now, I don't need you to eat like the same exact meal, the same exact thing. Like you can have some variety, but like, you know, you can almost like make a list, for example, make a list of your go-to foods. Like I can name the, the, the foods off the top of my head that I eat every single day is going to be a protein shake. It's going to be um, banana. It's going to be watermelon. It's going to be rice, white rice. It's going to be cream of rice. It's going to be spinach and it's going to be chicken and it's going to be Greek yogurt. Like those are the, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 foods that I eat every single day. And it's just like throughout the week and I'll have in different variations. I'll cook my chicken differently or I'll cook my steak differently or I'll have my banana. Like it, it varies, but like those foods I eat every single day. And when it comes to counting calories, that makes it substantially easier on you for two reasons. Number one, if you are using some kind of like calorie counting app and you also kind of eat the similar foods, in the similar portion sizes, your calorie counting app is gonna remember that. So you won't have to just like keep going, re-entering, re-entering, re-entering. It makes things very, very seamless for you. Number two, if you're having, you know, 100 grams of cream of rice every single day, for example, you are gonna to start to know exactly how much that is and exactly how many calories it is, exactly how, you know, what it looks like on the scale, all that kind of stuff. So it makes things easier on you. So I'd really challenge you, you know, come up with your, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten foods, go to foods that you have every single day that can help you eat similar foods throughout the week. It makes it so much easier, guys. And I've oftentimes get a lot of pushback to people saying, like, oh, well, it sounds boring or whatever the case may be. Remember, these foods are foods you actually enjoy. All those foods I just listed, I love Greek yogurt. I love watermelon. I love I, I enjoy eating chicken. I love my rice. I love my cream. Like, I love those foods. I enjoy eating those foods. And so come up with your foods that you enjoy eating and eat those frequently throughout the week. It makes this process a lot easier. I promise you. And if you're like, if you're someone who doesn't want to do that, I, I would just encourage you to please try it because I promise you it'll make it easier. So that's number two. Number three, and kind of piggybacking off the last thing here, eat simple one ingredient foods. I'm going to go through my list I just told you. I said I have a banana. How many, how many ingredients is in a banana? One. It's a fucking banana. How, I said watermelon. How many ingredients is in a watermelon? Um, guess what? It's just one. It's a watermelon. How many ingredients is in chicken? Oh, guess what? It's just one. How many ingredients is in white rice? Guess what? It's just one. One ingredient foods. Apple, chicken breast, eggs, Greek yogurt. They're, they're one ingredient foods. That's it. Eating one ingredient foods can make your calorie counting journey so much easier easier. And again, this, the title of this video is not make calorie counting sexier. The title of this video is how to make calorie counting easier. If you want to make it easier, eat simple one ingredient foods for so many reasons. Number one, it is so much easier to track your calories and track your food. If you let's say you're having, you know, let's say for dinner, you're having salmon and rice and spinach. And again, 
Not to say you can't like, you know, put some seasoning on the spinach. Like if you want to put some seasoning on the spinach, put some seasoning on the fucking spinach, man. If you want to put some seasoning on your salmon, put some seasoning. On your, like you can do those things. It doesn't have to be plain nothingness, but like you can find zero calorie seasoning to put on top of your foods to make them taste good. But let's say you're having salmon, white rice, spinach, right? Let's say you're having that versus this big casserole or this big pasta dish that you're having. Which one do you think is going to be more easier to track? You can weigh your salmon, you can weigh your rice, you can weigh your spinach. One ingredient foods. A casserole where it has this, that, this, that, and the other, it's just going to make it harder for you, right? It, it literally just makes the process more involved, more in-depth. It makes things harder for you. So especially earlier on, if you're somebody who's learning how to count calories or getting used to counting calories or whatever the case may be, Eating simple one ingredient foods is going to be massively, massively beneficial for you. And again, one ingredient foods. What is oatmeal? It's a one ingredient food. White rice. It's a one ingredient food. An apple. It's a one ingredient, like one ingredient foods. Not going to the grocery store and buying these things that are like, you know, they have this laundry list of, of ingredients there. Like it's going to be harder to track. And again, when you're making things, when you're making meals, making dinners, make it you can combine but like make it one ingredient things it makes this process so much easier on yourself or when you're going out to eat for example when you're going out to eat you can still get salmon you can still get rice you can still get a salad like those are one ingredient foods right so keep that in mind again that makes things so much easier i do that to this day and also just by the way it's really hard to overeat on one ingredient foods very hard very hard to overeat on one ingredient foods so that's what I'd say number three. Number four, piggyback right on top, have three to five go-to meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you have not yet watched my video on meal prepping and grocery shopping, I'll link that video here above. I have a few videos on meal prep and grocery shopping, so feel free to check that out. But have your three to five go-to meals, man. This will do a few things for you. Number one, it's gonna take out the guesswork and it's gonna take out the decision-making. So many times we have all this stuff going on all day. We got our kids, we got our job, we got this, we got that. There's so many things going on. If you can take out the decision-making from your food choices, it makes life so much easier on you, man. I promise you it does. So it takes out the decision-making. But number two, if you have these three to five go-to meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know no matter what, you can go to those meals, you know how many calories they are, you know how to make them, you know what the foods are, you know you will enjoy them. It makes this process, once again, just so much easier. You don't have to think about what are you gonna eat. You won't have to think about, am I gonna hit my calories? Does this fit in my calories? you have these meals that are on autopilot like you just know like for me for example chicken and rice man uh, it's, I eat it every single day I love it I enjoy it I know for a fact that's gonna get me to my goals I know for a fact it, there's no like guesswork there's no wondering there's no worrying like I know it's gonna get me to where I want to be I know it's gonna fit in my goals I know I can make it taste good like three to five go-to meals for breakfast lunch and dinner I would challenge you to take some time out of your day to make those and again this way, when you go into my fitness pal or, or whatever app you're using, the cool thing is you can go into these apps and save this recipe, right? So let's say you, you you're, or save a meal. So let's say you have this meal and you're like, hey, I want to save this meal. Now, when you go to have that meal again, all you got to do is just pull the thing up, press it, and you're good to go. That's it. It takes six seconds to you know, put your thing in my fitness pal or whatever app you're using. So three to five go-to meals. Again, if you have not watched my videos on meal prep and grocery shopping, check those two things out. I think it will help you out a ton. So Number four. Now, number five, pre-portioned foods. Very, very, very easy. So I grabbed some foods for you. Let's say Greek yogurt, for example. You heard me talk about Greek yogurt, right? This is a pre-portioned size. So I know how many calories it has. I know how, much, how many grams of protein it has. I know because it's already pre-portioned right there. I don't have to weigh it. I don't have to do anything. It's already there. It's pre-packaged, man. You know exactly what you're getting from that. That makes getting your protein goal, for example, or, or hitting your calories or whatever the case may be, so much easier because it's already done for you. It's pre-portioned size, right? Let's take these rice cakes, for example. For one rice cake, and again, you, you can weigh out the rice cake, but you know, for one rice cake, it's 50 calories and uh, 11 grams of carbs. It's right there. This is right there for you. You don't have to do anything with this. This is already a pre-portioned size of something. So you already got this there for you. Let's talk about protein powder, for example. Protein powder, one scoop, okay? One scoop is 100 calories. You know it's already, it's already done for you. It's pre-portioned. 
finding things that are pre-portioned already to take out a lot of the guesswork, to take out the even work in general. Like you, all you gotta do is scan this and you're good to go. Like you, it'll tell you how many calories it has. You just put in, I had two rice cakes. It'll tell you that I had one scoop of protein. Like pre-portioned things are really, really, really beneficial when making calorie counting easier. So find those things for you. Find different portion sizes or find different pre-portioned items that you enjoy, that you wanna eat, and I promise you it's gonna help you out. And by the way, if you wanna try this protein powder, it tastes freaking amazing. It's from Legion Athletics. I will put a link here below if you wanna try it out. It's by far my favorite protein powder of all time and the best, I believe the best tasting of all time. They have various different flavors. This one's strawberry and banana. This one tastes really good, but all of their protein powders taste very good. So if you wanna try it out, you can actually get like 20% off if you use my code. So just go and check it out if you want to. All right, number six, pre-enter your food into your MyFitnessPal app or whatever app you're using. It, this is what a lot of my successful clients do. If you pre-enter your food the night before, you won't have to worry about anything. You know exactly what you're gonna eat, you know what time of day you're gonna eat, you know how much you're gonna eat, you know you're gonna stick within your calorie limit for that day. Pre-entering your food into your MyFitnessPal app or whatever app you're using to count calories the night before can make things so, so much easier on yourself. And people just are so, I oftentimes get pushback for that or people just don't do it for I'm not sure what reason, but it is such a massive benefit to you. So please just make sure use that to your advantage. Use that to pre-enter your food. That way waking up, the, that next morning you wake up and everything's taken care of for you. You know what your breakfast is, you know what your lunch is, you know what your snacks are, you know what you're having for dinner, you know everything. So the day is already taken care of. You don't have to work after that. You know exactly Damn, I almost put it back to normal. You know exactly what you're gonna have, okay? Pre-enter your food, it's gonna help you out a ton. Last but not least, talking about eating out and tracking calories. Here's what I will say. Number one, I've done a video on this before, so feel free to check it out. Number two, you're not gonna be perfect, and that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect in order to see progress, you just have to be consistent. So number one, I would say if the restaurant does have calorie counts available to you look it up beforehand and check it out or again like most chain restaurants do have their calories listed so if you're going to a chain restaurant just kind of check it out the calories beforehand that can help you plan for that day as well number two choosing simple one ingredient foods can help you out a ton because again let's say let's say for example let's go back to that salmon rice and spinach thing if you've been having salmon a lot and having spinach a lot and having rice a lot and you've been having that meal for example right you probably know what 100 grams of rice looks like you probably know what 120 grams of salmon looks like you probably know what you know 100 grams of, of sauteed spinach looks like you probably know so when you go out to eat you can guesstimate to a pretty good degree of what that is because you've been doing it and doing it over and over and over and over again so eating simple one ingredient foods can help you guesstimate to the best of your ability. Again, as opposed to if you get some big pasta dish or a big casserole dish, not to say you can't have it, but it is to say it's gonna be harder to track those calories. And so getting just simple, plain, one ingredient foods, getting very simple meals, getting very simple things, going to help you in the long run. That's number two for eating out. And number three, again, um, I would go watch that video that I put up there. Because again, um, there's so many things you can do when it comes to eating out and tracking calories. And actually, I wrote an entire article on this as well. I'll put it in the description of this video here below if you want to check it out. Um, I think it was a very, personally, I think it was a very helpful article. So I hope you find it helpful. But check that out as well. And uh, that will give you all you need for eating out and tracking calories. And last but not least, the outro. I just want you to remember, when it comes to counting calories, I want you to be really honest with yourself. How long does counting calories actually take you per day? Seriously, how long? Maybe in the beginning, maybe 10 to 15 minutes max for the entire day, maybe 10 to 15 minutes to weigh the food, to count your calories in your MyFitnessPal app or whatever app you're using, maybe 10 to 15 minutes a day. And the more you make it easier and the more uh, seasoned you come, the more skilled you become with tracking calories, maybe it takes you five minutes a day, maybe. Do, is, is taking an extra 10 or 15 minutes per day worth you reaching your weight loss goals, worth you fitting in a bathing suit and actually feeling confident, worth you making sure you get your blood markers down or your, your, blood, your, your blood pressure down and your blood marker is good to go? Is it worth you being healthy for your kids and your grandkids and staying around and living a longer life and doing all these great things? 
I don't know. I, I think when you put it like that and you actually have it from that perspective, as opposed to sometimes there's, just, there's this narrative like, oh my God, I got to count calories. I don't want to do that. Like an extra 10 minutes a day to have all of the benefits, all of the benefits that you want, losing weight, getting stronger, getting healthier, lowering your blood pressure, living longer, losing body fat, feeling more confident, walking on the beach confident, all those positive things you want could be accomplished from an extra 10 to 15 minutes a day. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it's a, uh, you know, a good fair trade if, you know, just my opinion if you ask me. So think about it from that perspective, have that perspective going into it. And I promise you just from that alone, probably going to get a lot easier to count your calories because you now have a better perspective of, you know, a positive outlook as opposed to this negative, oh my God, I got to count calories and spend this extra time and weigh my food and do this and do that. Think about the benefits you're getting from that and literally think about how much time it's going to take you to see those benefits. Because literally calorie counting can make sure, for example, if you want to lose weight, you're in a calorie deficit. Calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight. So when it comes to these things, if you can take 10 minutes a day to pretty much ensure your progress, if you do it correctly, I don't know, man, seems worth it to me. So that's what I'd say, guys. Hope you found these seven things helpful. If you did, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with people if you want to, and uh, just thank you for watching, and we'll chat soon.